Well, our terrorism expert, Wasim Nasser, has been looking at some of that footage released by the Israeli army from Al-Shifa Hospital. He's with me now to tell us a bit more. Um, Wasim, before the raid, Israel said that hospital was the beating heart of Hamas operations in Gaza. From what the IDF has shown the world so far, is that true? Well, actually, let us see first where the hospital is mm. on a map. We can see that it's in the middle of the battleground today. So the red areas are the areas that uh, our uh, Israeli operations are ongoing now as we speak. And you see Ashifa Hospital, it's in the middle of that area. Mm. So and But when you look at the footage that was released by the Israelis themselves, well, actually, there's, no, there's nothing much uh, on mm. that footage. We see a few Kalashnikovs, we're going to look at it maybe now. Where the spokes, the Israeli spokesman uh, talks. Mm -hmm. Here we see an IRM uh, machine. We see some uh, some ammunition behind it, but nothing that gets even close to a command and control uh, uh, operation room. Yeah. You see, and there's nothing uh, astonishing about finding arms in a war zone. Mm. We can imagine that it could be the security of the hospital. We can imagine that it could be Hamas fighters who were injured and being treated. In, uh, in the hospital or just the Hamas police station. As we know, there's a police station for Hamas in the Shifa hospital since at least 2014. So nothing mounts uh, to what we were showed. And here we, maybe we can look at another video, a 3D video that was issued by uh, the Israelis a few weeks back to justify, or it was actually the main argument to see that this military complex that they claim is under the Shifa hospital, justifies a big military operation mm. in order to stop a Hamas activity in, uh, in Gaza. As we speak, we don't have any proof of, of this uh, facility being real, actually. Maybe in the upcoming hours, in the upcoming days, the Israelis will come out with another uh, with proofs, mm. but up to this point, they didn't. And even it's maybe a little bit uh, clumsy to have issued such uh, proof as a few Kalashnikovs to justify the military operation ongoing there. All right, huge questions then mm. about what the Israelis did in Al Shiva Hospital. <clears throat> um, more broadly, though, tell us what's happening in the Israeli ground war mm. in the north, because it is hard for us to get clear information, but you've mm. been looking into the footage, so what do you think? Of course, so let us see the map another time. And here we see the evolution of uh, Israeli operations. So as I told you, the port is occupied by uh, the Israeli military. We see the street 10 in blue and we see the street Salah Din street in red, which is the street which is supposed to evacuate civilians from the north mm. all the way to the south. And as we look at this map, we understand that the evolution of Israeli forces is still very limited to the to the to the to the area of the beach actually and the Shati the Shati camp. They did yet get into really dense uh, uh, neighborhoods in the heart of uh, of uh, Gaza City, despite the fact that they occupied the uh, assembly uh, building, they occupied the military police, they entered the Shifa hospital and the Rantisi hospital. We, we see in this video, what does it look, look like? This is an Israeli footage uh, uh, that was uh, published. Here is the evolution in the northern part of Gaza and what was used to be a training camp of, uh, of Hamas. And we see the huge firepower of uh, the Israelis. And here we see examples of tunnels that were used by Hamas fighters in the first lines of defense mm. of, uh, of Gaza City. And here they were going to watch blowing up one of the one of the tunnels. In another video, we see the evolution of Israeli forces here in the sh on the shores of the Shati camp. Uh, so in the heart, in the middle of northern Gaza uh, towards the beach and here the fighting was really hard and we see it's uh, in the streets, in the buildings, and this is where the Israeli forces lost some of, uh, of the men in the, uh, in their, in the process of uh, going all around Gaza City, as we said, the dense areas of Gaza City. On the other hand, we can look at some Hamas uh, footage now. And here's, here's, the, the, here's the images from Hamas side, you see. Mm. So this is how Hamas is confronting the Israeli forces with the tandems, RPG-7 tandems fabricated locally by Hamas and attacking uh, Israeli tanks and what they consider as vulnerable uh, areas of the tank, knowing that each shot doesn't mean that the tank is destroyed or as it, uh, the tank is like stopped. 
Uh, some are, but not all, of course. We only have one uh, 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 footage of a tank which was quite uh, damaged, but we don't have uh, like proof that each shot is getting a tank being uh, destructed. And in another footage that maybe we can see, it will show us how uh, Hamas is, is using the buildings. So this tank is being shot from above. And this is why, as you see on this Merkava 4, it is protected, the tower is protected. And here what we saw this, it's an ATGM, it's a guided missile. So it's important because we saw, we didn't see a lot of them mm -hmm. yet. So we can imagine that Hamas is still waiting for Israeli forces to get into the heart of Gaza City in order to use such kind of missiles which are much more efficient than the tandem that we saw. And one particular thing, here is the footage of uh, from Ashkelon, and we see that despite in Israel. in Israel, and we see that despite 40 days of fighting, Hamas is still being able mm. to shoot rockets on uh, civilian areas in in uh, in Israel. I mean, knowing that that was one of the main objective of the Israeli op operation is to stop Hamas from shooting rockets, which is Hamas is still doing as we speak. All right, really important. Thank you very much indeed for showing us that footage from the IDF and from Hamas as well. Um, meanwhile, take us to something that's happening uh, near Jerusalem today. This is, and um, we're getting reports that three gunmen a attacked a checkpoint. They wounded six Israeli members of the security forces mm. there. Just tell us a bit about that and perhaps what that tells us about mm. what's happening in the West Bank, about Palestinian mm. militancy in the West Bank. Well, actually, the situation is very tense in the West Bank and in Jerusalem also. Maybe you can look at the footage that we got from the equipment of the uh, of the attackers. Mm. And th that's, uh, that's another footage of a Hamas attack in the West Bank. Mm. It was issued by Hamas and we see how they trapped an Israeli patrol. They burned the car actually here. And when the Israeli patrol came to check the car, they activated improvised explosive devices all around the patrol. So this is one of the rare operations that were, that were claimed actually by Hamas in the West Bank. Knowing that the activity, and this is here what we are talking about, the equipment of the attackers of Jerusalem today. Mm. And you see how many, uh, the guns, the ammunition, and the determination to uh, commit such an attack and to make a high number of, of casualties. So we can imagine that one of the most important fronts today, we talk about, about the front in the north, with the Hezbollah, the front uh, with the Syria and the Golan, but one of the most important fronts and critical fronts today for Israel is in the West Bank, knowing that settlers' activity is uh, higher, getting higher and higher, and creating much more tension and resentment in, uh, the, for the Palestinian uh, population in the West Bank, where uh, Hamas is getting more and more uh, popular uh, as we speak.